Jay here, Stratford Paddock, Bournemouth 2, Manchester United 2, a result that doesn't really do anything for Manchester United in terms of our, well, I don't even think we're in a Champions League race anymore, are we really? I think it looking road proof, we were going to make the uh, Europa League. Uh, I'm going to be joined by Adam McCullough shortly. Make sure you are getting involved in the chat and the comments and let us know what you think about everything that is going on with Manchester United and what you thought of that performance today. I mean, it was pretty grim, wasn't it? I mean, it just seems to be the sort of, um, yeah, it's just the same old, same old. I'm sick of coming on here. I'm sick of talking about the same results, the same performances. Um, I mean, it, it's just really, really annoying and deflating. And yet again, Manchester United just didn't turn up, to be honest with you. I'm just looking at some stats. Bournemouth had 20 shots. 20 shots they had to United's eight. Five of Bournemouth were on target. Two of United's were on target. Bournemouth expected goals 1.75. United's expected goals 1.18. Um, United, surprisingly, had more possession, but it doesn't really make, make much difference, does it? Because at the end of the day, you, you know, we didn't we we didn't we didn't win, and we needed a win. To be honest with you, we needed to get some you know points on the board, try and at least end the season on a bit of a high. Let's get a run going for this final bit of the season, and instead now we're down seventh. And if you look at the record, is it one win in seven games? I mean, it has been pretty grim. Um, I don't know what is going to happen with Eric Tenag. I don't know what his, his future, the future holds for him. I don't know what Ineos' plans are. There's been a lot of speculation. But performances like today and results like today aren't going to do him any favours. They aren't going to convince anyone he's the man to take Manchester United forward long term. That's not me piling on the manager, but you've got to be realistic about it, haven't you? I mean, it's just poor. Really poor. Get involved in the chat and the comments. I want to know what you think about the game today because it's a really frustrating game from a Manchester United point of view. We started off pretty poorly. Dominic Solanke getting the opening goal after 16 minutes. Again, that's been the story of the season for Manchester United. It's been the story of the season against Bournemouth as well. It's the second time we've played Bournemouth where they've got off to a, a really positive start and we've been sort of chasing them. Then they get uh, Bruno Fernandes gets us back in the game on the half hour mark, sort of goal out of nothing almost, fizzle across the box, he's a good finish by him. You think, okay, nice one, we're back in it. Five minutes later, as so happens so often with Manchester United this season, where we score and concede within five minutes, Bournemouth get another goal through uh, Clivert. And then the second half, we get a bit of a, I wouldn't say lucky one, but this, a, a, a penalty again that sort of comes almost out of nowhere. So you think, all right, we're back in it. 2-2 two, two, with half an hour left to go. And then I thought, I thought we are going to throw it away. I thought Bournemouth were going to get a penalty right at the death. The, pe the referee gives a penalty, um, Ryan Christie going down, but it turns out it's a free kick and nothing comes of that. So the game ends 2 all. I mean, it's a result that doesn't really do anything for us. And it's just, yeah, it's just... I don't I'm just getting fed up of making excuses for this Manchester United team. I'm getting fed up of making excuses for the manager and saying, oh, you've got to stick with him. We can't keep sacking managers. Give him time under the new regime. Give him a season under the new regime. When Ineos come in and he gets to work under a proper structure, it'll be different. When we get some of these players back, it'll be different. When week in, week out, it's a hard watch watching Manchester United. It really is. The Liverpool game in the FA Cup aside, every game over the last sort of month or so in particular has been just like pulling teeth. And every time you think we're getting anywhere, when you think we're having a bit of a, a performance or we're going to get a result, like we did at one point against Brentford where we were woeful and then we get a late goal, we concede an equaliser against Chelsea. We concede two goals in the last five minutes there, or last two minutes there, deep into injury time against Liverpool in the league. Looks like we might get a result on the 84th minute, going into the 84th minute with two on ahead. They get a penalty. And then today, yeah, we get it back twice. We go behind twice, we battle back but there's no chance of us getting a win. It didn't really look, to be honest with you, like we were going to get a winner. We had a bit of the ball in the box, Casemiro in the box, something was going on there. There was a Diallo shot that went well wide from a difficult angle. There wasn't one shot or chance where a goal, yeah, it looks like we're on it here. It looks like Manchester United are going to get a winner. And in the end, we were almost hanging on. I think it was a bit of relief, obviously, when Bournemouth were awarded a penalty by the referee and then VAR turns it into a free kick. I mean, I just feel I'm getting like Ralph Ragnick vibes with this season. It feels like the season's just petering out. The only salvation we've got is the FA Cup. And I'll be honest with you, I worry. I think the FA Cup is going to end up giving us a, more of a headache. It is, I think, even if we get past Coventry, which isn't a given, to be honest with you, I'm not trying to be silly. You know, we're going to get a bit of Coventry, but yeah, Coventry in the semi final of the FA Cup for a reason. You can't just think United will just go to Wembley and win easily because of the way we've been playing. 
I think Coventry will give us a game. Even if we get past them, we're going to probably, probably face Manchester City in the FA Cup final. And I cannot see a way this Manchester United team, playing the way it's playing, beats a Manchester City team who just drawn three all, I think, with Madrid midweek, battered Luton today 5-1, challenging for the title, on for another treble. I just don't see it happening. I really don't. Get involved in the comments and let us know what you think. Uh, Marcus says, Ellie Sims will cook us. Bello says, garbage. Uh, G Weber says, it was a mid-table clash. John Whitehead says, need a proper left-back CDM and attacker. Uh, Bassett, 1%. Mac Adam McCall is going to be joining us. He's joining us. Good to see him. He can wallow in the misery with me. Um... Bassett 1% says, Kumwala doing the doggy dance. Casemiro is finished, says Steven Gerrard. And Steven Gerrard would know about being finished as a midfielder. <laughs> uh, Nickel in 17 says, Fred was undispected. I think he means disrespected there. Um... M. Mosin says, will this channel continue to wank over Rashford because he's a local lad? That's a myth. I think you look at the criticism Marcus Rashford's had. I don't think we'll wank over anyone because I'm a, a, a local lad. To be honest with you, I don't think he had a good game at all today. I thought the only one who really played well today for United was Bruno Fernandes. Um, get involved in the chat in the comments. Let us know what you think. Pete says, embarrassing performance. I agree with that. Um, Stephen Gerrard also says, Coventry was shocking against Wolves. Got lucky. Uh, Thomas Clark says Oli is caretaker Marcus says Bruno didn't play well I disagree with that I thought Bruno was decent to be honest with you I thought he at least was up for it got involved obviously um, scored a couple of goals as well and was everywhere I thought to, to be honest with you towards the end of that game uh, Matt says Rashford needs to be sold M Maguire may always be available but he's not to be I think that should be Um Paul Larkin Coyle says, State of on Online Fans, Ole was the man, Fred was disrespected, McTominay is missing, you're all absolutely mental. Hit that like button as well, please, people. You might not like what's happening at Manchester United, but you can like the video, and if you're not doing, subscribe to the channel as well. Kev Rotherham says, Kino for Gaffer. I think Kino will end up doing time <laughs> if he's the manager or the coach or anything to do with this Manchester United team. I'll, I think he'll end up chinning someone in the ch in the dressing room. Um, Saul says, Bruno plays better, deeper. Jay Tomine says, we were rubbish. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I can't, can't argue that. I thought Manchester United were rubbish today. Let me know what you think. Uh, Henrik Ruckman says, not many real chances. Attack was blunted. Yeah, it was. None of the attackers, I thought, really got into the game but today. I don't I don't, oh yeah, Mac is I, here, think sorry. I think it's difficult for Go this on, isn't bro. me making an excuse for any individual. I think everyone was crap today. Yeah. Apart from Bruno. But our midfield doesn't actually do anything. We, we don't function well as a team, as a unit at all. No. Like when could you remember like a moment where Hoyland, Garnacho, Rashford were put into a position where they could score by the midfielders? No. It's not all really. very erratic, very slow at times, very ponderous. When the wingers get the ball, they haven't really got much chance, so they have to go back. And that again comes down to whatever's going on, like well, how are we trying to play? What are we trying to do? Can I, ask you like, I genuinely don't know. And I, I know we've had injuries and injuries don't help. You've got Maguire playing at centre back, which is never ideal. You've got Kambuala playing, which is like seventh choice. You've got, you know, Wambasaka playing at left back. Like no one planned for these things to be the case yeah but you've also arguably got the midfield that the manager was kind of hoping to start the season with and look Casemiro's legs are gone so does that yeah but we have that midfield that he wanted and the front three has kind of worked well so it just it's just all pretty confusing I, I, I don't know where I stand on the manager as well that's what I wanted to ask part you. of me goes go on yes like you, you've lost 40% of the games this season in the league. We've, we've lost more than we've won, probably. Like, how can you make excuses for the manager? And like, surely he's got to go. But then, on the other hand, like we were saying during the game, all right, goalkeeper, we need one of them to back up Onana. Right back, we need one of them. Centre backs, we need two or three of them. Left back, we need two of them. Midfielders. We need to replace Casemiro, Eriksen, McTominay. So we need three of them. In attack, we need a backup go uh, striker or two. We need a couple of right wingers. Like, yeah. you look at every position on the pitch, we need players. So then, if everyone agrees with that, which I think everyone does, yeah. how do we then go, well, the managers, you know. It's, it's weird. I think, he, I think last season, he kind of, 
he did better than expected and this season he's done worse than expected a lot yeah but I don't worse. think <laughs> it's I, I don't think we're f that far off where we probably should have been last season you know what I mean do you think and therefore we've kind of got to do we have to go through this pain to get somewhere do you think that because I've said this argument myself that give him a chance under a proper structure do you think we've seen enough from him to think that if we not get, this season no. we get a director of football in like Dan Ashworth for example that's the name that well that looks like it's going to happen Jason Wilcox takes over Omar Brad as a CEO do you think that they, these people come in and okay we make some signings but this manager can take us forward or do you think that he's almost playing his way out of a job I know based he's off playing, last he's managing his way out of a job I say. based off last season yes based on this season no yeah. so then does the truth lie somewhere in the middle do we have to kind of zoom out and take the two years as a whole yeah maybe maybe in this day and age and look we're all guilty of it i'm guilty of it as well but we're all very very reactive to what's mm. sometimes do you just have to so you take a step back back out of it and look from because that's what the reason i feel like this and people go why isn't adam angry uh, this season's gone beyond the point of being angry about anything. yeah so now we need to look at solutions. How do we, what is the solution? Is it stick with him? Is it move on? I genuinely don't know. Do you think- I'm so confused. But I do think on. the man, if, if the board are watching, I don't think they're watching and going, yeah, he looks like the man that's going to turn this around. No, no. Unless they're seeing something and hearing something behind closed doors, which we're not. You do, yeah, you don't know. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Maybe there's an element of that. Do you think the FA Cup could save him? Or do you think that if this league form continues, because it's one winning seven now in the league, which is woeful, against some teams as well that really should be beaten, especially, you know, you look at, like, especially the positions we were in in some of those games. Mm. Do you think the FA Cup could still be enough to save him? Or do you think he might get to the point where if this league form continues, let's say we win. What, like Van Aar? Yeah, like we, let's say, for example, the next six games we win one game. Yeah, which has been the form we're on at the minute. And you end up finishing like 9th or 10th or whatever. They might look at the FA Cup and go, well, all right, you've won the FA Cup, but that's not enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because basically, if we win the FA Cup, what we're into now, and I'm not knocking this, I'm just saying, what we're into now about the FA Cup is we're talking about one big win, aren't we? Mm. Because Coventry, you should be beating Coventry in a semi-final. No disrespect mm. to them, I know they're in a semi-final, but let's get real here. Yeah, Coventry, are, you know, so they're in a similar position as we are, but in the championship. Yeah. So we should be beating Coventry City at semi-final. Mm. So if you win the FA Cup, you're beating probably City or mm -hmm. Chelsea if they do a madness in that semi-final. So it's one game really in it where you've got to win that one big game. Is that enough? If you're mm. going to be proper sort of hard-faced businessman and go, look, we're going to keep him on the job because he got one good result here when the, the, the ship is sinking. But or do they look at it and go, the flip side is back-to-back -back trophies in two seasons, which we've not done a thing since 2009. There's the injuries, all the other stuff you've mentioned. Let's give this guy a chance now. He's delivered a trophy. Let's give him a chance. How do you, do you have any idea how they might look at it? How would you look at it as a fan if you won the FA Cup? That's probably an easy one for you. But I like him though. Yeah. Is that? So I don't know if I'm. Is that? Are you being biased because you've like been in his press conference and no, no, there, nothing to do with that. that. No, I like it. Like yeah. I like him. What is it about? As him like? I, I like him as a manager. I like the idea of him. Yeah. I might be wrong. I might I might the idea of him might be better than the reality yeah, of Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like I like last season. Like and then I look at this season and I go, I don't think he planned to fucking have these like this going on. <laughs> it's a mess, bro. It it, it, it is a um... You think he planned to be having Maguire and Evans as his centre back partnership sometimes? I don't think he planned for and look you have to you have to go, right, you're going to have injuries in the season. Yes, true. Yeah. But maybe when injuries happen, he expected it to be Maguire and Lindelof. Well, we're down to Lindelof our, and yeah. Varane. Or, like, or Luke Shaw at left centre-back yeah, was like, a thing last season with like, Malassia at left-back. Yeah, maybe he expected we get injuries and Malassia plays. Yeah. Not we get injuries and Luke Shaw, Malassia, Evans, Varane, Lissandro Martinez, <laughs> the list goes on. Yeah. All, like, it's crazy the amount of defensive injuries in particular that we've had. And I do feel... And I do feel if Martin is as fit. And I, you know, like, certain things annoy me. And I said this before and I'll say it again. Like, last season it annoyed me because 
we went into January where we were fighting for, I think we were 10 points off the top, so you weren't really in a title race, but you're fighting for top four. You're in the uh, knockout stage of the Europa, you're in the Carabao Cup final, and you're in the FA Cup still, yeah. obviously we haven't kicked the ball yet. And he got just free transfers and loans. And you think, you probably need a sign in that. Mm. Because you go, look, okay, we've got all these competitions going on. Go out like Arsenal did it, where they went and bought, was it Leandro Trossard? Yeah. And he's been a good player for them. They spent like 20 million quid or whatever. I think we needed something like that. And instead we got what well, Vegos do, did okay, we had his limitations. It's a bit, sir, all right, it was a good play, but you're Come on, let's be real. Well, Vegos didn't do okay. Okay, right. He, he's, he, did, he did okay because... Our expectations were in the mud, and he was a league well, one player. Well, that's my point, though. And I was—I I did the, the, the video that we put on TikTok about going to Anfield, and that yeah. was the we were relying on was ridiculous. Yeah, that's no disrespect to the kid because he tried his best, but his limit was not good enough. His yeah. levels—he wasn't good enough for Burnley in the Championship. Yeah. They loaned him to Besiktas for a reason, yeah. and we had him starting up front for us. Yeah. I'm not just making it all about. Him. My point is, he needed backing, and in January should have gone. Look where we are now. We've got all these competitions. We've got a good chance of winning yeah. three trophies. Let's buy him. A, Arsenal did it. Other teams did it. I think we spent the lowest of any Premier League club in January. We spent nothing. And even the likes of Bournemouth and Leeds and teams like that yeah. were, were going out and spending 20, 30 million. And it wasn't like a thing where we weren't spending because we were going to go ham in the summer. No. Uh, I, it was still all over the place. Yeah, and I still think we're feeling some of these repercussions. And I still think, yes, the manager's got to take responsibilities. And people keep going on about the Anthony signing, right? That he wasted this money on Anthony. And I get that. I understand that. But we still, you can't just go, well, you're wasting money on like that sit now. You're not getting any signs. Also, you, need, you ever wonder why he was so desperate to bring Anthony? Well, because lost, he, the options were that or nothing. Yeah. We lost the first two games, and the club basically said, he, there was talk of him getting Arn out of it or uh, yeah. Adrian Rabio, who he obviously wanted. And they, those would have been a lot. Yeah. He obviously weren't going to get De Jong, chasing him all summer. And the club were going, right, you can have Casemiro. Great. Yeah. Why not? And obviously, Anthony. Yep, he wanted yeah. Anthony. But instead of paying 30 million, which would have made a lot of sense, we're going to pay 80 million which didn't make any mm. sense. So I understand why the manager's gone, yeah, listen, if it's him or nothing, I'll have him. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> which has been the sort of MO on it for a lot of United managers, where it's like, well, you can have him or you're not having anyone. Well, yeah, manager, yeah. Okay, then give, give me Odi Nagalo because it's <laughs> better than nothing. So I do feel for him on that front. I just, my, my point that I'm sort of getting to, is we should have maybe backed this manager in a bit better than we had done when he was doing well. Mm. And now he's not doing well. It might be too late for him. Mm. It might be to the point where Ineos come in and go, look, yeah, this it's kid. too far down the yeah, lane. Yeah, that was the opportunity last January to maybe get in a player that could have made a, bit man of a difference. We have that with every manager, don't we? What if that yeah. summer was different? Yeah. Mourinho? Mourinho. Van Aal? Van, like the Mourinho one, we finished 19 points Ollie? behind Manchester City. We bought Delo, Fred and Lee Grant. Ridiculous. Oli? Oli. This limit with transfers with Oli, like you can have two or three. Or that yeah. summer... Well, we brought in Donny van der Beek, who we obviously didn't want. Alex Tellez, Palestri, Amad Diallo. Cavani obviously did really well and was, was a first-team player. But we basically brought in a load of squad players when he mm. needed a midfielder. He needed someone in that midfield. Mourinho got, out finished second, got the low Lee Fred Grant. and Lee Grant. Yeah, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Do you know what I mean? So right. That was the same season, the same summer, sorry. We finished nine points behind City. They went out and brought their transfer record for Riyad Mahrez, a Premier League winner. They got better, improved their team, their actual team. Mm. And we added to a squad that Marino, with players Marino didn't even want. Some comments and super chats here. I'm going to get through some of them. Jibak Sahu says, what cities are we looking at in Conference League? Jesus, wept. I don't even know. You know I'm not going. No, I'm, I mean, there's, uh, there's, I'm not I, mean, I don't, I like a, how would you pronounce I will that? not watch Matt, one. I say it the wrong way. Happy Vasaki, everyone. Thank you. That's from Paul B. Uh, Burnside, is back. Say, lads, lads. I used to always go Vasaki Mella. Say you know what you're on about. Me and the lads. <laughs> um, Burnside is back. Good to see you in the chat again. Says, lads, lads, his lifetime, man, you goal difference is about 10. You're off your rockers. It's not him. Get rid, move on. This is where I'm at, though. I'm struggling to defend him. Like, normally I'd be like, oh, I'll give him time. I'm at the point now where if they said he's going in the season, I'd be like, it's a shame, but I can understand why. Yeah, I mean. Do you know what I mean? I'm not in a. am not going to people that don't want him to stay. Oh, you like a fucking idiot. No, absolutely not. But at the same time, I just feel like we have to give time to someone. Yeah. And the, 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 the I issue. feel like he is maybe the right one. The, 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 the question for me is getting someone like, and um, let's say, for example, it might not happen, but an Amorim or a uh, Nagelsmann, is that a bigger gamble than keeping Eric Tanag? Yeah. Is that, that's the gambles. question. That's it. I feel like we're in a point now where they're almost a similar level of gamble. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, if you'd asked me six months ago, 
replacing Eric Tanag with someone like Nagelsmann, oh, that's a big gamble, it's not worth it. Now mm. I feel like it's almost the same. Um, Justum1 says, 10 years of impatience, being reactionary and mismanagement is why we're here. We've gotten into two finals and won a trophy, maybe another final. Let's take our medicine this time and back a manager. I, I understand That's how that. I feel, you know. I understand do that. We, do we have to go backwards to go forwards? Is this part, part of it? Just and I don't like to compare everything because everyone's situation is different. Yeah. Managers are different. Football's like, whatever. But like you've seen other managers benefit from having that season where they could just be shit and just, all right, now I know this geezer's a mug. Now I know, yeah. like last season, he might have pulled the wool over my eyes. Last season, he made me think there was a half decent player in there. Yeah. But now I know the guys, like it's like, you know, earlier when you were trying to convince me, uh, actually Anthony did all right. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. And I'm like, only for those games, bro. Don't be sad. No, I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> like, yeah. Sorry, I don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying you were saying keep yeah, him. Is, no, I was just saying like, the last couple of games. You know, season, the last three games. Well, actually, well, actually, McTominay scored a few. Well, actually, Anthony did all right. Well, actually, Maguire's. Okay. No, we know the shit. We know who they are. Fuck them off. I know who you are. Like, we need to get. We need to stop this shit, man. Like, oh, yeah, but. Oh, yeah, but. No. The geezer's shit. They've shown us who we are. Let's accept it and move on. Let's accept it. I'm going to go through a couple of comments before we wrap up. Um, Ms. M. Fadji says Zidane in. I don't think Zidane is. Zidane, Zidane. I don't yeah. think he wants it. No, I don't think he wants it. Walks, walks back into this team, to be fair to the kid. Um, <laughs> Slowly complete says Pep's first season taught him a lot, which was his worst. So you learn about the squad. Yeah, I think, I think his worst season. I think he's third, didn't he? And I think we have this thing where we like loads of players, kind of like, "Hey, new manager, let's go." Yeah. Our, and then like our, yeah. our sort of new manager bounce every time, other than Ralph Ragnick, has been good. Like there's been, a, you know what I mean? Like you've had a response where you've gone. Like from Moyes to Gangal, you got a response there. From Gangal, we got back into the Champions League. When Jose came in, he won two trophies in his first season. When Oli came in, mm. there was a bounce in his, his when he was caretaker. We had went on that record breaking run, of course. Like you tend to have mm. uh, uh, Tenag in his first season, won a trophy, finished third. You have this little belt. The trouble is, we can't can, um, keep it consistently. Like the second and even to get to a third season, there's a massive drop off. Just not good enough. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Listen, thanks to everyone who got involved with the chat. Just before I do, Arash says, I can't believe your laid back attitude to Eric Ten Hag. Do you know what that is, bro? That is just deflation. We're, we're just, you know what? The fight's been knocked out of me. Honestly. Like Maka said earlier on the watch along, I'm not even angry anymore. Just disappointed. Just disappointed. Uh, go and check out Adam McCullough. Are you posting something on there on your channel? You got yeah, my review is about to go live now. Go and check out his review on Adam McCullough TV. You know where to find me. Make sure, if you're not doing already, you are hitting like, share, and subscribe. That's been Adam McCullough. I've been Jay Moy. This has been a review of yet another disappointing result for Manchester United. Thanks for watching. Ta -ra.